great uh, Louis Leakey had a nickname for uh, Jane Goodall, Diane Fossey, and Birute Galdikas. He called them the Trimates. <laughs> so in uh, March of this year, Ayu Peter and her teenage son, Agu, made the journey from Nunavut to the Netherlands. And they did so to make a point that's rarely heard. Their point is that the seal hunt is a good thing. The Canadian government flew them, along with the Newfoundlander, to The Hague so they could face hundreds of activists who were protesting against the seal hunt. The stakes were high as a new European policy could end the importation of Canadian seal products in all of its 27 countries and potentially harm fisheries and other maritime industries. Belgium has already passed its own ban and other countries will soon follow suit. So the question to be asked is, is protecting indigenous humans as important as saving other species? Are you Peter? Turn down the heat, please. <laughs> Good afternoon, and thank you for inviting me here. It's been a pleasure to be here, very educational. First of all, I would like to wish you happy International Operational People's Day. And I wish to thank the Mississauga Nation for allowing us to meet here in their traditional territory, welcoming us to exchange ideas and thoughts. Thank you. There were a couple of things I wanted to correct before I started, which is in the, on the website it says I'm a seal hunter. I aspire to be, but as of today, I'm still not a seal hunter. I wanted to clarify that. And the introduction is uh, saving or safeguarding Aboriginal peoples um, first, as opposed to saving the other species of this planet. I'm not sure what you meant by the other species. Did you mean southerners? <laughs> 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 And if, if you do protect Aboriginal people, we will protect the animals that we depend on. And anthropologists have sort of dated it to going back 8,000 years. We've occupied the Arctic North, and we have never extinguished the animals that we live on. Otherwise, we would extinguish ourselves, like a mass suicide, and we haven't done that yet. So if you do protect our rights, you do protect also um, our, the animals that we live on. The garment that I made especially for today is to show you what seal skin looks like. This one is, is ring seal skin. The ring seal has been around as long as we have been around in the Arctic. And if you could start the, the video. There's some pictures that Dennis Mentier has taken from the Arctic on the cruises that we take between Greenland and Canada, just to show you what our environment looks like. It's not like the environment that you have down here at all. I wish to start the talk by singing a, a traditional song just to frame the connection between the seal and the Inuit and the Arctic. The song is by Elisabeth Utuva. It's not her song. Our songs are passed on from one generation to the next. And she gave me permission to use this song. Samaya, 
back to when we were still living on the land uh, out in the camps before we were located into central uh, locations. The song talks about in the winter, this is summer pictures you're looking at, you can sometimes see the inland ice at the back, it doesn't melt, not until recently. It talks about the hardship of looking for game. And the seal was the one who, that we survived on. We have always lived on the seal. The seal meat is very nutritious. The seal fat provides the light and the heat and provides the opportunity to melt, melt the water so you can drink it, so you can cook your food. And the seal skin provides the rope so you can harness your dogs, also so you can uh, be dressed and also make waterproof uh, footwear for the hunters to wear. It talks about the intricate connection that, that we have with the land and how we have to respect nature because it's providing for us. It is a humane way of treating it. We keep saying that we do not mistreat animals, um, not, the sea, not the seals also, because it's by our tradition. There's a book that you can purchase here outside, and it talks about this wonderful connection that the elders were talking about, how they had this connection with the seal. It is beautiful. I would like you to, not even if you purchase it, just to have a look at it. So in March, my son and I went to Holland uh, the Netherlands, uh, we went through Amsterdam, we were asked to go to The Hague. There was a protest that, that was being set for March 15th to stop sealing, to stop Canadians from hunting seal. And the parliament was passing a piece of legislation that is banning imports of seal and seal skin products and seal products. We started selling seal oil also to the European um, commun uh, countries, and even the seal oil uh, would not be allowed to be imported. That legislation is stating that they don't want seal and seal skin products imported, but they're, they're excluding Inuit traditional seal hunt. So I asked, we went to the parliament and we protested this, and I, and I asked the animal rights uh, groups and the parliament, what do you mean by traditional Inuit seal hunt? Because you're excluding it. They didn't have a definition. There's no definition in the legislation that is banning uh, imports of seals. I kept pushing and then it, it came down to that, yes, we could hunt the seal with the harpoon, you know, go back 500 years, and, but we couldn't sell the skin. 
that's fine with me. What's fair for me is fair for you. You should also go back 500 years then, back to using your horse and, you know. It is quite easy for a country that is so far remote from my uh, community in the north and pass a piece of legislation because it doesn't really affect them. It just affects a small group up in the, in the far north and it's very far. Besides, the 14-year-old boy that was one of the protesters said, well, you could just move to Holland, uh, just move to the Netherlands and leave your seals alone. <laughs> well, with the ice melting, I don't think I want to be <laughs> below water level. <laughs> <laughs> If that were the case, I would live in a boat. <laughs> um, it's not as simple as that. The legislation that is being passed, that, that was passed, affects us indirectly. Anytime you um, ban seal skin imports, or seal, or seal skin, as you remember in the 80s, when the seal skin anti-movement was going on, it, it wasn't targeting Inuit way of hunting or Inuit livelihood, but it affected us so bad. The price of seal that the hunters depended on went down so drastically that they couldn't sell or live on selling this, the seal skin. You may be thinking, uh, as, they did, as they did say in Europe, well, you can live off other food in the groceries. If you had been looking at some pictures, do you see any tofu trees? <laughs> um, no vegetation gardens? It is frozen, there's permafrost. We cannot grow on the Canadian side, we cannot go out and plant potatoes and grow them. We cannot go and pick up um, vegetation out, out on the tundra, except small berries that we live on and seaweed and stuff, but our main livelihood is on seal. I brought my son, he's 17 years old, to Europe, and I had him introduced to the young guys who were holding posters of seals on ice. Seals on ice being butchered looks delicious to me. I don't know, for you, maybe it doesn't look like that, because that's how we eat the food. When we are cutting up the seal, we eat it instantly. It provides so much heat and nutrition. In the Arctic, we heat ourselves from, from the inside out. We don't try to heat ourselves like a lot of people who come up north from the outside in. The heat is generated from inside and out. That's why I'm also so short, because it preserves my... Um, it's true, it preserves my heat from escaping. <laughs> I was looking at those uh, two cute boys who were holding these posters and introduced them to my son. And I was thinking, yes, it is easy for you to try to stop my son from leading a futile life. You have a choice of going to university. You have a choice of becoming astronauts. You have a choice of becoming whatever you wish. Your universities, your schools, your everything is there. You have jobs. You don't have a 75% dropout rate. You don't have in some communities 50% unemployment. You have people who are skilled. You have jobs that can be filled. But my son, who's 17, we have the highest rates of suicide, highest unemployment, highest everything. We just top the list of everything. He doesn't have those same choices. But he, because of his name, He has 20 names, has a responsibility to feed his wives, his sisters, his brothers, his uncles, through his names. These are his responsibilities, as he's named after people who have passed away. And when he goes hunting, when he goes to catch a seal or a caribou, he brings those food to his relatives. That is his obligation, and it's a skill that he has to learn. It's a skill that he has to develop. It is his responsibility through his name, as a member of his community, 
as a boy in his community. So even though he doesn't have those same opportunities as his counterparts in the Netherlands who are protesting, um, he still has an obligation to develop his skills. My son and I, Acho, were all dressed in seal skin and when we went to see the protesters and when we went to the European Parliament. And he was concerned because he had heard some people would spray paint uh, seal skin and fur clothing. And this was before we had left home. Uh, he was concerned because I had been the one sewing the clothes. And then he thought, oh well, I'll just go and kill some more seals and you can make me a new park. <laughs> uh, to him, I asked him, to him going to Europe, um, so what are you going to say for these people passing a piece of legislation that is not aimed at directly at you, but that will affect our livelihood? What will you say to that? He thought about it for a second, and then he says, well, that won't stop me from hunting seal. It is his obligation to his family and to his community is more important than the legislation. Even if he couldn't sell the seal, even if I couldn't sell the seal for him to buy gas, he still has an obligation. We are still going to eat the seal, we are still going to live on it. As an example, uh, you may not know, if I had a piece of seal skin this big in my palm, that seal skin has as much nutritional value in iron as 60, six zero sausages just as an example. So if we don't want our children to become too unhealthy and also still be able to be nutritionally fed, fed we still feed them seals, seal meat and caribou meat. Just for an idea, how many of you have been in the Arctic? Okay, that's a good number. Um, I'm glad to see that. So, Many of you have a good idea that we can't just go out and harvest other, other, other vegetables and potatoes and stuff. It is extremely hot uh, down south. When I was flying, coming down to Toronto, I could see from the plane, everything was just neatly arranged. Just little squares and you could see all the little houses just right by each other. And when you got off the plane, when you came down here, downtown, there's no wildlife. Everything is concrete. You have humongous buildings. There's, there, it's seemingly void of n nature, uh, wildlife. And I thought, how can some people in Europe have such, be so fanatic about their their legislation? How can it be so far remote from um, our nature, the way we think? Because this young lady I work with, she said, well, maybe if they came up here to see how we live, they would change their mind. And they would understand how we live and they would let us uh, sell our seal skin. It's not as simple as that. When you are in an environment such as this and you have lived in a big city, you, are, you tend to think that your eggs and your chicken come from the store. And it was killed prior to that. The fact that the, the cow and the pigs and the animals were slaughtered, you don't think about that because it's nearly packaged in the store. You really don't have to pay attention to, to that. Whether it was force-fed, whether it was fed a lot of antibodies, how it was living in, in those small quarters, and how, when it was slaughtered, everything was contained inside a building, there's no windows. It's not that it's being stunned and slaughtered and slashed outside so people like him can film what's happening, or people can take pictures and tell you, this is really gruesome. We really need to treat our animals better. Ours is open to everyone. The way we hunt, the way we collect our food is open to everyone to see, and that's what you see. 
So even if you try to be nice, try to be politically correct by exempting Inuit traditional hunting, whatever that may be, I don't know, it still affects us. The pieces of legislation that is being passed will kill our economy. The small communities in the Arctic, all 27 of them, when you go to visit them, there's seal skins drying. Not because they went out to just get the seal skin, because they went out, though it was their obligation to feed their family. Because of the high unemployment rate, they don't have any other job opportunity. But it's mostly for their obligation to feed their family, and by society, they have to share it with everybody. I hope that you have heard some of what I had to say about our life in, in the Arctic and how we depend on the seal and how saving Aboriginal people's way of life is also saving the seal. Because our belief is when we stop hunting the animals, they go someplace else, because they don't feel there's a need for them. Thank you.